I used to read movie magazines as a kid with a, uh, a pint of Breyer's coffee ice cream. That was like heaven for me. Movie magazines and Breyer's ice cream, you know? Marlon Brando was my favorite since I was 13 and saw him in Guys and Dolls. And I didn't sing for 27 years because of stage fright. When I did, I used a scene from Guys and Dolls with Marlon and Gene Simmons, only I made myself like a character to replace her uh -huh. so I could sing this song. He was my, my biggest crush, my idol, somebody who was such a brilliant actor and so beautiful. Yes. Oh, my God. And what about you? It's got you, too. Same flame deep within made them shine. Your eyes are the eyes. One of the things about Marlon Brando, it's in the public record, a very wounded person. Yes, he's a, he was a very damaged person. Yeah. And I wasn't exactly unwounded either. And you know, these two obsessives came together and just. <laughs> exploded. We were really addicted to each other and, and you know addictions are very very difficult to get rid of. Very. It was an eight-year relationship. Mm -hmm. He married two other women in the course of that relationship, mm -hmm. fathered children with them. Yep. What was it that made you stay? I loved him. You know it's obsess obsessive love which is a whole nother thing. I mean we need another half hour for that one. <laughs> but the, with but the presence of a psychiatrist well, I don't think Mil uh, Marla never got to trust women. I, I don't know enough about Elvis really to make any kind of uh, supposition. But I know that Marlon was a horribly damaged person by the time I met him. His mother was an alcoholic, his father drank, and uh, you know she disappointed him constantly over and over and over. So he kept either punishing women for having the capacity to do that to men, and he kept punishing himself by finding women who were very often not reliable. Interesting, yes? And uh, yes, indeed, and tragic in the sense that it even drove you to attempt suicide while it you did. were with him. It did. It was my way, uh, uh, twisted and, and uh, sick as it was, to try to end that kind of humiliation and pain. I just didn't know how else to do it because I kept going back to him. And apparently she became a very great teacher. And then she had, of course, these t students who went forth, you know. And one was Warren, Warren Beatty. I think De Niro studied with her. I think, uh, and I know that Brando did, you know. I knew Marlon. <laughs> yeah, he was something unbelievable, unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Sarah, my grandmother. I told you what she said about Marlon, didn't I? She used to say I wasn't home when people, she, she, she didn't like him in the beginning. And uh, she said somebody came to say about him, she said he, he's a bum and his mother is a drunk. <laughs> his mother was alcoholic. I went to AA, I learned about AA through Marlon and through Jody Brando, which was something in those times. But I think when she saw him, she saw something else. And then no matter who came to see me, she said I wasn't home. She only wanted me to go out with him because he was such a great actor. Something about Marlon, you know, they have this thing, Speak to Me, and they, did you see that? It's, they played it at Lincoln Center, Speak to You, and it's him talking to himself in, in a microphone. Oh, yeah. But the thing that they didn't, that it didn't convey is that he had like every really great man, a huge sense of humor. I mean, I'm sure that Einstein could make you laugh more than anybody, a huge sense of humor. And you didn't get that, but he, I did know him very well, yeah. I, I actually was in love with him when I was young, but everybody was in love with him, yeah. Then they said, now we want you, but Marlon, you have to 
Marlon wants okay. to see you. Now, at that time, I didn't know who Marlon Brando was. His films were not. I didn't see uh, Streetcar. Yeah. yeah. I did not know who Marlon Brando Harry was. Harry Murphy, you're sitting there telling me you didn't know who Mar Marlon Brando was after Streetcar? It wasn't out. Oh, right. Anyway, oh, oh, well, he had true to form, true to form. First of all, Marlon was gorgeous, absolutely right. gorgeous. I had no preconceived idea who this man was. So they leave me alone in, I think it was the uh, director's uh, office. <laughs> I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, this guy comes in with Levi's and a T-shirt. Surprise, surprise, right? right? Something comes new in for Mary and Murphy. never looks at me directly. Everything is... Yeah. To the side, you know, and, um, and you know the new look, the new look, the Mary. new yes, the, the animal. Because he walked around. The did room. you feel that animal? Oh yeah, you did. And sexual attraction. Oh, oh, oh. did he look believe. at you sexually like when at that time? Do you think? Well, it was very provocative. Provo ah. Not uh, lecherous in the sense of you know looking right, at right, legs right, or right, other. Right, right. The way he did it. You know? No, it was very, uh, uh, very different. And it, uh, obviously, it was very Brando different. brought a new thing to the film, new thing to the stage. Yes, he, he was the man who really changed. invented and changed the whole theater and yes. film. Yes. Am I right? Let's show this scene. I'd okay. like to see this scene of okay. Marlon Brando. Carbonville at the meet. Bunch of motorcycles came through this way yesterday. They didn't stop. Is that what they give you in those races for killing yourself? That's right. You want it? <laughs> no. Hmm? Well, go on, take it by No, go on. You can't do that. You, you want it. You have to get your name engraved on it or whatever you do important to you. You don't, you don't give something like that away just like that. Not unless you knew a girl real well and, well, and you liked her. Hey, Johnny. Yo. About this town. They got a dock here. They're gonna rewire crazy. Hey, what are we gonna do, sit around and scratch ourselves? Yeah, we gonna wait for crazy, or are we gonna get out of this dump? We're gonna wait for crazy. That is scene, this hot scene. It must have well, been a very hot scene at that time of the... Yes. Today, it would be like, ho-hum. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, but that I mean, was hot the... then, those... Yes. Yes. He, that, yes. he brought it first. He was the first one brought that to the screen, that oh, passion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's very different. Working that, with that... Brando at the time, working your scenes with him. Tell me about it, Mary. Well, he, he knew... See, I can have a great facade... I can come out and I look like I know what I'm doing. I don't have any idea what I'm doing, but I look like I do, uh -huh. which is good for acting. That's great. By the way. Yes, yes, it of helps. course. <laughs> but he knew. Uh -huh. He knew. He knew I that you were scared to death. He did. Oh yes, he's very. He has that animal right. perception. Uh -huh. Now I've heard since we did this picture, he was a very nasty fellow to some leading ladies. Uh -huh. I don't know. He wasn't then to you, not at all. No, he was very nice. Brought me over before we started shooting. We sat down in a little coffee shop and so forth, and he sat me down. We started talking, and he'd ask me questions and start laughing, and he, his whole persona changed entirely uh -huh. to one of just a friendly, let's go have some fun together. But when that I, camera's rolling, it's something. Well, that happens. <laughs> yes. It's a magic, huh? Tell me about, he, he changed, I mean, his script. He doesn't follow the script. No, 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 no. Not at all. I, well, I mean, he, he follows the sense, and it wasn't it, it wasn't technical dialogue. It didn't make any difference which question came right, first or right. whatever. 
But he had from the act. He say he was the true actor studio, not the phony actor studio. What do you mean the true actor studio? He didn't go and prepare. Uh huh. He what? He was preparing all the time. All, he prepares he all a, the time. He had a life, inner life. Uh huh. Tremendous That's interesting. Life. Oh yes, tremendous. But he wasn't out, and I've got to feel the city. He, he, he had it at all. He was working all the time. I knew how to work. His working wasn't just the lines, but of finding things to do. Right. And, and to say, I don't want that girl to go into complete shock. Uh, <laughs> I want her uh -huh. to, to respond from me. So he would do things to divert me, playing with the coin on the counter, you know? Yes. And, and it would throw me or what, and that's exactly, which was a better for me. Otherwise, I might... When did you meet Marlon? In 1955 in the commissariat Paramount. Did you? What happened when you met him? He just asked for an intro introduction, and then a, a couple of days later, he phoned me for to have dinner with him. And coming from a very strict family, I said I would love to, but he'd have to bring a friend along. Oh, and so did he? He did, yes. Did he really? Mm -hmm. um, and then did he ask you to marry him shortly thereafter? No, I came down with tuberculosis. I was in the hospital for 10 months. Oh, my gosh. And uh, during that period, I fell in love with him. And then we got married, yes. Why, was he attentive then? Very attentive, very kind to me and to the other patients and to the nurses, yes. Well, now, in your book, apparently after the, the marriage, things fell apart. Well, as soon as I was on my feet, uh, as soon as I was able to make my own decisions and carry on with my own life, he didn't like that independence. Oh, so you think that was what really mm -hmm. happened? Yes. Well, uh, what, are, what are some of the things that he did to you? What, what, what was, you were married for how long? Very short time, a really. Year. Just a year, yeah, and, yes. and in that time you became pregnant with your son? Yes. Um, what happened, though? What did he, what did he do to uh, well, you? Well, uh, I, I was new to the country. I was new to the business. I was suddenly thrown in with business managers, publicity agents, uh, theater people, uh, studio people that I couldn't contend with. I didn't know how to. Uh, there was a lack of communication between Marlon and myself. There was a language barrier, which we tried to overcome. And things got more and more difficult, and finally it did break. And you say you're afraid of, with Marlon's behavior, that's what you're really afraid of? That I am will? very afraid of it, yes. Because of your son? Because of my Why? son. Why? Uh, Marlon is very erratic. Uh, he is not a good family man. Uh, a child needs discipline. He needs schooling. It's very important. He needs his meals on time. He needs to go to bed at a certain time. He knows uh, how far he can go, what to do, what not to do. He cannot be permissive. Marlon is not that kind of a disciplinarian. Do you see your son now? Oh, yes, I do. Do you? Uh, well, what's he doing? Has he fared well? He's uh, 21 years old. Yes, he lives up in Oregon. He bought himself a piece of land, and he's farming up there now. Well, do you and Marlon have any contact now? What no. Do you don't know what he thought of the book? Uh, <laughs> I don't think he liked it. No, no, but you haven't had any direct feedback? No. Yeah. Well, the one thing that amazed me, in the book, you talk about his bringing home a young woman that he was having an affair with while yes. you were married. Yes. What were the circumstances? How did that happen? I mean, isn't uh, that an awful brazen thing to do? It is very brazen, and it shocked me. I was very pregnant at the time, and uh, the girl was Franz New, and I remember. Uh, I was just in my lo lounging pajamas. I just got up from bed. And I wasn't looking my best, and in walks this very glamorous girl, and I thought, I don't like that too much. And uh, I but think... But then she started chatting you about using curry or something? Yeah, she told me, uh, because I was breastfeeding my baby, uh, and I was eating curry, that it was bad for the, for the baby. And I asked her what, what her, were her qualifications that she can make such a statement. After all, she wasn't a mother. And the thing that irritated me most was she went into the ice box, and I happened to love mangoes, and she took the last mango. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's sort of romantic and glittery, the way love affairs used to be in the 50s and late 40s and even early 60s. It's gotten more, maybe there's more quantity, but there's less quality. But men seem very upset at the idea of revealing the names 
of past husbands and lovers. Well, but women like it. Well, now, why do get all upset? I'm not upset. What about the men in here that you, you talk about? Well, some of the men loved it and called me up and mm -hmm. gave me funny stories. Marlon Brando called me and said, look, it's okay to put me in your book, but in a scale of 10, I want to be 10. <laughs> you had a romance with Marlon Brando, didn't you? Well, yes, it was a very friendly one. It went on for a number of years, and we were sort of um, in between love affairs, friendly lovers. And uh, that's the only way I can describe it. In those days, he wasn't afraid of the press, and he was a beginning actor. And as a matter of fact, I went to Hollywood first, and then I warned him he should take his relatives. So he came with his sister, and he lived with his grandmother in Silver Lake. People don't know it. He, 